Poco reached the big station and arranged his trucks. Then he went to the shed and asked politely if he could come in. Duck was not pleased to see a diesel at first due to his past experiences with diesel, but presently whenever he found out that Boko knew Edward, he became more friendly. And by the time Boko told him about Bill and Ben, they were laughing together like old friends. Have the other playing tricks on you? Ho ho ho, oh goodness me, yes, chuckled Duck. Edward's the only one who can keep them in order. I sometimes like to call them the bees. A good name, chuckled Boko. Their terror is when they start buzzing around. Just then, James bustled in. What's that, Duck? You afraid of bees? Oh, They're only insects Shut after all. Already, so don't let that buzz box diesel tell you different. James, his name is Boko and he didn't wait. Oh, he wouldn't care if hundreds were swarming around. I would just blow smoke and make them buzz off. Oi, Boko. Buzz, 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 buzz. Ho, 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 buzz, buzz, buzz. Oh, don't have time for this. James retorted in a huff. James was to pull the express the next morning. And when Duck brought his coaches, the platform was crowded. Mind your bags, mind your bags. Two porters were taking a loaded trolley to the front van. Fred drove while Bert walked behind. Careful, Fred, careful, warned Bert. But Fred was in a hurry and didn't listen. Suddenly, an old lady appeared in front. Fred stopped dead. But the luggage slid forward and burst the lid of a white wooden box. Suddenly, some bees flew out. And just as James came backing down, they began to explore the station. Someone shouted a warning and the platform cleared like magic. The bees were too sleepy to be crossed. They found the station cold. James's fireman was trying to couple the train. They buzzed around him, hopefully. They were hoping that he could mend their hive and they could go back and be warm again. But the fireman didn't understand. He thought they would sting him. He gave a yell, ran back to the cab, and crouched his jacket over his head. But the fireman didn't understand either. He swatted the bees with his shovel. The bees, now disappointed, turned their attention to James. James's boiler was nice and warm. The bees swarmed at it happily. Oi, buzz off! Buzz off! Buzz off! He hissed. He made smoke, but the wind blew it away and the bees stayed. At last, one settled on his hot smoke box. It burnt its feet. The bee fought. James stung him on purpose. He stung James back, right on the nose. <coughs> Whistle James. He had enough. So did his driver and fireman. They started without waiting for the guard's whistle. They didn't notice until too late. They left their train behind. So in the end, it was Boko who pulled the express. He was worried at first about leaving his trucks, but Duck promised to look after them. And so it was arranged. But Boko was able to make up some of the lost time and the fat controller was pleased with him. Oh, I say, Henry, is that James the red-nosed engine? Oi, I say it is, Golden. <laughs> oh my god, I still can't believe he got stung by a freaking bee. Buzz, buzz, buzz. James thought the big mainline engines they were were being very silly indeed.